When I was getting inside my mom's car, I saw my brother staring at this man. He was standing on the side of the road. I couldn't see his face, but I could sense he was peeking at us from behind a tree. Kimmy, let's go, sweetheart. My mom's voice brought me back to reality. On our way from school, my mom told me she would go to the airport to pick up dad. It won't take more than an hour, and she needs us to be home. I couldn't get your babysitter on the phone in such a short time. So, Kimmy, you'll have to be the head of the house for a while. Can you do that, darling? Yes, Ma. I can take care of myself and Charlie. That's my girl. You're so smart. After reaching home, Mom fixed us some snacks and went to pick up my dad. Our doors had password locking system, so the moment I closed the door, the entire house locked up automatically. My brother Charlie was lying on the couch watching cartoons. I was sitting on the floor making drawings, but I felt weird. A fear that something terrible was going to happen numbed my body. All the doors and windows are locked. There's absolutely nothing to be worried about. What the hell is happening to me then? Just then, Charlie mumbled. Can you see him? What? Who are you talking about? I saw someone outside the window. I got up and stood in front of the window. The street light was flickering like crazy. Under that street light stood this tall man wearing a black suit and tie. He kept his head down so I couldn't see his face. He was so tall that his head was inches from touching the top of the street light. His arms were dangling on both sides and he had long fingers. The lengths of his arms surpassed his knees. Was he the same guy we saw near the school? Charlie was right. He was the guy whom I saw in the afternoon, so that means… that means he followed us home? To get a closer look, I picked up my binoculars. His head was still down and I watched him for one glance. I backed away from the window, jumping in fright. The binocular fell from my hand and hit the floor. I looked at my brother. He was also frozen on the couch. We, we need to call 911. I picked up the house phone and dialed 911. I glanced back at the window and now the man was standing in the middle of the street. He moved closer to our house. 911, what's your emergency? Someone followed me and my brother home from school. He's outside our house now. Okay, calm down. What is your name? Kimmy. He's looking at our window. Where are your parents, Kimmy? My mom went to pick up my dad. It's only me and my brother in the house. Okay, Kimmy. Stay with me on the line. The officers will reach you soon. Please hurry. I'm scared. I kept looking out the window during the call, and every time I glanced, the man moved closer to our house. Kimmy, can you explain to me what he looks like? He... he has no face. And he's tall. Very tall. He's scaring us. Please help. Okay, what is he doing now? I looked outside the window and my heart stopped. The faceless tall man was nowhere to be seen. Did he go away? Kimmy, can you hear me? I... I can't see him now. I think he's hiding. Oh God. I started crying. I was only 12. My brother was nine. Charlie was sitting on the couch like a stuffed animal, not moving or saying anything. Just then, I heard knocks on the door. Kimmy, what's going on now? He's trying to get in! The knocks soon turned into violent banging. Whoever was on the other side was trying his entire force to break down our main door. The cops will be there any moment, Kimmy. Just take your brother with you and go to the bathroom. Lock the doors and don't come out till you hear but a big rock flew at our living room window before the operator could finish. Breaking the glasses, it rolled onto the floor. Oh my god! He broke the window! I ran to my brother, who had now started crying out loud. I grabbed his hands and we both started screaming. Please! Somebody! And then, I saw a hand grabbing the top of the window. The fingers were bony and huge. Slowly, a tall leg and an entire gigantic building started inserting their way into our home from that broken window. The faceless man now stood in our living room. His head was taller than our ceiling, making him stare down at us. He stretched his big arms to us and covered our faces with his palm. 
A feeling of dread mixed with a blurry vision took over my body. Everything in front of my eyes started to black out slowly. Hello? Kimmy! Are you alright? Hello? Anyone there? I'm fine now. The faceless man is our friend now. He just wishes to play with us. Where is he? Don't worry, they're with me now. I'll keep them safe. Hello, sir! Don't do this! Don't harm them! No, I love children. I should get back to playing with them now. <laughs> the story you just saw is a dramatic presentation of this chilling 911 call. In this call, a little girl's voice can be heard talking, asking for help. The way the call moves on is horrifying and raising many doubts on people's minds about the existence of Slender Man. Hear the call and let us know in the comment what you think. Someone follow me and my brother home from school. Our parents are not home. Have you seen this person before? No. Can you please send help? <laughs> Where are you now? I am in the living room. I'm looking out the front window. The tall man is scaring us. <laughs> Where is this guy? In front of the house. What is he doing? He's standing behind a tree. He's, he's very tall. Help us. I'm scared. I don't know. The lights went out. I'm scared. Help is on the way. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What's happening? He's, he's, he's looking at me. <laughs> he, he has no face. His face is gone. My roommate and I rented this small house in a safe neighborhood. We were in college, and our side jobs paid us well enough to live a comfortable life. So the house had two bedrooms, one at the front and one at the back. The back one was mine as my roommate Jenna refused to take it. She said the woods outside the bedroom window gave her goosebumps. I wasn't that easily scared, so I happily agreed. One night, around December, I was dead asleep in my bed. Jenna was in the study room preparing for an exam. Heavy snowfall was going outside. I don't remember why I woke up, but my eyes went straight to the window facing the woods. I never draw my curtains because I like the moonlight coming from the window. 
In that pale moonlight, I saw a face staring into the room from the other side of the window. I rubbed my sleepy eyes and got up on the bed. Just then, I saw a man move aside and vanish into the darkness of the night. I couldn't move for minutes after realizing someone was peeking from my window. I told Jenna about this, but she said I was only having a bad dream. But as more time went on, things got even more disturbing. He now comes to my window every night. He thinks I don't know he's there. He thinks he's clever, but I see him. I feel him. When he watches me, I'm stiff as stone. My heartbeat races as I start to sweat and my blood runs cold, but I never move a muscle. Sometimes, he puts his hands on my window, his breath fogging the glass. Sometimes, <laughs> I can hear him crying. His intentions are sinister. I know it. This man is twisted. The man is vile. This man wants my blood. He wants me dead. I know it. I won't allow that to happen. I can't. I started to hear his whispers. They're too faint to understand. But I know they're there. I feel the pure evil in his voice. It scares me. And I hate being afraid. Something must be done. Last night, I took one of my kitchen knives and brought it to bed. I hid it under my pillow. Pulled up my covers and closed my eyes. Listening. Waiting. He came to my window. He put his hand on the glass. He began crying. <laughs> then I heard my window getting pulled. He stepped his foot inside my room. He went through my closet and touched my clothes. He pulled up his chair, sat, and watched me. I waited. He started humming lullabies this time. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine You make me happy When the skies are gray You'll never know, dear How much I love you Please don't take my sunshine away he stood up and walked around the room, sobbing. He walked to the side of my bed, leaned down, and kissed me on my cheek. I grabbed my knife from under the pillow. Just then, I heard footsteps outside my door. Oh my god, it must be Jenna. No, Jenna, no! Don't come into the room now! The man rushed to the window and jumped outside. Jenna got in and I started crying. <laughs> Please, just call the cops. The cops inspected the area around the house. They found shoe prints on the snow right next to my window, but there was no evidence to identify the intruder. The cops patrolled the area for three nights. On those nights, nothing happened, and I thought the man was finally gone. He must have been scared away. After three days, we were again on our own, for safety purposes. Jenna suggested putting a security camera facing my window, so in case he comes back, we can catch him. Last weekend, Jenna wasn't home. She stayed back at her boyfriend's house. I had just gotten home and was taking a shower in the bathroom. I was tired and washing the stress away with the warm water. When I heard a clicking sound, I opened my eyes, and someone flashed a camera blinding my eyes. I came out of the bathroom in my bathrobe. I ran straight to my room and locked the doors. The man was back and clicking pictures of me in the shower. I felt so unclean and terrified at that moment. I called 911 and sat on my bed, turning off all the lights in my bedroom. The first 10 seconds, everything was quiet. Then footsteps appeared. They were muffled yet loud and they were coming from my window. I watched in horror as the man walked outside my house. Stopping near my window, he placed his hands on the glass, trying to get a good look at my room. For a few seconds, he struggled to accommodate the dark, but then, then he saw me. He looked deep into my eyes and smiled. 
Open the door so I can put you to sleep. That was the first time he spoke directly to me. I wanted to scream and cry, but I was too frozen in fear to do anything. He began singing the lullaby, standing outside my window. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. I don't remember how long he went on like this. But I remember collapsing on the floor. The cops later told me I fainted out of shock. They found me in my room unharmed. The man was gone, but they found surveillance footage. He was a married man with a family of his own. Seeing him regularly, no one would ever guess his sick mind. I have changed my address now, and I always sleep with my house locked and curtains drawn. In this footage, you can see a man roaming outside a house. His behavior is weird and he keeps getting close to the window. He even stops and peeks in to figure out what's happening in the house. It's pretty clear to the viewer that the man is an intruder, watching the owner of the house. This man was later identified as 49-year-old, Robert T. Casena. He was accused of stalking a 24-year-old woman and peeping into the windows of her Hudson, Wisconsin duplex earlier this year. Charges against Casena were amended due to criminal trespass and violation of privacy. According to the March 14th criminal charges, Hudson police had been called to a duplex in the 300 block of Locust Street several times that month after the 24-year-old woman reported that someone had been peeping into her windows. An officer wrote in a report that he watched a March 12th surveillance video that shows a man in dark clothing sneaking up to her window and putting his face close to the window trying to see through the blinds. According to court records, two temporary restraining orders against Casena were granted to the woman and a minor who lived in the upper level of the Locust Street duplex. <laughs> But why take this to your new house? Because this is the only thing left of him, Mom. Jenny, you need to realize Jim was never a good choice for you. I agree, it's sad that he died in the house fire. But finally, you've got a fresh start. Please, leave me alone. I hoarded the last cardboard box in my car and drove away. My mom stood on the porch with a worried face. I had to fight with her on this. All I'm doing is taking a mirror that belonged to my late boyfriend Jim to my new house. So, what if he was a bit different than others? I loved him, and so he loved me too. Maybe a little too much, but that's still love, right? I cut off all my friends because they too hated Jim. They said he was obsessed, but they had no idea how Jim cooked for me during my sickness. He cared for me like I was his queen. Who knew I would lose him in that terrible house fire? That one night, I went to dinner with my family, and everything changed forever. Jim was angry with me for prioritizing my family over him. I mean, I get it, okay? He couldn't bear it that I gave my attention to anyone other than him. Sometimes it was difficult, but I was managing. Why did he have to die? I parked my car and unloaded my luggage. I rented this house to live alone. I grabbed the mirror wrapped in paper and went straight to my bedroom. I put it right on the wall next to my bed. This is a big mirror. Jim bought it for me from a yard sale. I instantly fell in love with its intricate design. And then I went to take a shower. I was washing my head when I heard someone whisper in my ear. Yeah. I quickly opened my eyes in a panic. There was no one inside my bathroom. My heart was racing because for a second, I thought it was Jim. He used to sneak up on me during showers. 
That was his way of showing how he couldn't stay away from me for even a second. I calmed down and got done with my shower immediately. Coming out, my eyes went straight to the mirror. Just then, something moved away in the reflection. Suddenly, my bedroom light began flickering. Come to me. I slowly walked towards the mirror. As I stood near it, I couldn't help but notice my glowing skin. I always had acne issues, which resulted in so many spots. But now, now there was nothing but a shine on my cheeks. I sat down on the chair in front of the mirror. I caressed my cheeks while saying, Wow, so beautiful. My hand automatically grabbed the hair comb, and I started brushing my hair sitting in front of that mirror. I was looking at myself. My eyes were never so big. They were perfectly still. My reflection stared back at me like a real person. A smile appeared on my face as I touched my silky hair. The comb never went through so smoothly. God, how come I never noticed how beautiful I am? Someone again whispered, Don't look away, Kenny. And I couldn't. Minutes turned to hours. But I was sitting there like that, staring at the mirror, combing my hair with a big smile. After a point, my hands started to hurt. My eyes got watery, but my body was not in my control. I couldn't even blink. I heard my phone ring. It's probably my mom, but I can't look away now. All I want to do is keep looking at myself. The phone rang four to five times and everything became silent again. The sun set long ago. My room is now completely dark. The flickering light has switched off on its own. It was me brushing my hair in the dark. I could hear crickets chirping and owls hooting, telling me that day had shifted to night. Yet I couldn't get up. My hands started aching, but I kept hearing whispers from the mirror whenever I thought of giving up. Kenny. Don't look away. I don't know how long I was like that, but I heard the main door open. Jenny? Jenny? Where are you? It was my mom. Her rushing footsteps were coming upstairs. Jenny? It's been weeks. You're not answering my call. And why are you sitting in the dark? God, what is this awful smell? Jen? Jen, you're... scaring me now. Jenny? Are you... <laughs> 23-year-old Jenny Barker was found dead in her apartment this afternoon. Jenny shifted to this new home after her boyfriend's tragic death in a house fire. She argued with her mom and asked for space before moving to her new house. Her mom was worried about Jenny's well-being, but she didn't disturb her, thinking that Jenny needed her own time to get back to life. Even though she called Jenny on the first day of her stay at the new house, Jenny never picked up. Thinking her daughter was still angry with her, the 48-year-old mother waited for a callback. But weeks went by, and Jenny never called. This worried the mother, and today, she came to check on her in the afternoon. But as she stepped into her daughter's bedroom, she smelt something rotten. Switching on the lights, she met with a grisly sight. Young Jenny was gone. Her lifeless body was found sitting in front of a mirror. Jenny's mom says the mirror belonged to her late boyfriend. It was highly mysterious how Jenny died. There was not a single wound in her body. It only looked like she had died of starvation. Her body has been sent for autopsy, hoping someone can decipher the reason for Jenny Barker's death.